Hello and welcome to another video for Linmob.net. So this is booting post market OS uh, on my brand phone once again and it's not your regular post market OS with Fosh or Plasma Mobile or one of those UIs. It's Sample X Mobile or SXMO. So we're logging in with Mo and Mo and there we are back to 1970. Now, first, this th thing is very different. It's based around the suckless philosophy and suckless software like DWM, DMenu and so on. You might know those if you're into tiling window managers. And it's very different. Initially, when I first tried it in June or July, uh, it just had uh, controls um, like... Uh, with, with you, you had to control it with the buttons basically so um, there was no way um, to really um, use gestures and I was really afraid that I would break my my buttons by by actually using it also you really need to read the user guide when you start to use it and if you're using a pine phone as your only device I would really recommend uh, printing that out so that you can look it up if you're ever frustrated or lost so this is the volume raise button and pressing uh, tapping it once launches the application specific context menu this one um, currently uh, this is the global menu actually so we need to start an app first which we can also do by pressing the power button twice because pressing it once brings up the keyboard it's uh, S V K B D so yeah also suckless so let's just bring up a terminal here to demo that menu so that's uh, the ST uh, application specific menu one press uh, so let's go down and close it and then two presses that's the global menu, right? And then you can three tap three times or hold for the screen lock. Then volume lower. First of all, you can use it to scroll through when menus, but yeah, that's not a feature. Um, now one tap uh, toggles the layout algorithm, which is only interesting if you've got more than one window here. So yeah. This right, you see one application to above uh, or two next to each other, and then uh, we can do when we're in uh, stack view, we can shift the current cli client. So let's just briefly type something here so that it's visible and uh, and tap twice, and well, yeah. <laughs> I didn't tap fast enough, so that's really a difficulty here. Um, yeah, I think now. I don't know. I, I, I look. It's it's tough. Again, I'm I'm really not good at stuff like this. And then there's uh, three tabs, which is very important. That kills the client, so it kills the active window. One, two, three. <laughs> yeah, really, I messed it up again. Uh, it also works which is a bit easier uh, by holding that button and then the LED lights up so you can lose it again and then I already showed you uh, launching ST and uh, toggling the keyboard but uh, three taps on the power button oh, damn it oh, it's, it's really tough and I'm really tired because this is not the first attempt at this video uh, yeah look um, I think holding it is easier now I opened a bunch of clients here so I can really um, kill them one by one like a serial kill I know so yeah also there are gestures for um, stuff like this so I can get this menu application specific menu by just swiping down now let's close it and I can get the system menu by swiping down with two fingers 
and when I swipe up, uh, swipe down, I can hide the keyboard and I can show the keyboard by swiping up. And if I do that with two fingers and I swipe down, I kill the current client. So that's pretty nice. And then there's more uh, like uh, moving um, backspace like this and enter like that. Long swipe. Looks like it's from the middle. This is a way to lock the screen. I'm not going to do that now. This should rotate it, but uh, that uh, never actually worked for me. Then um, you can uh, increase or decrease the volume by swiping on the left border. And if you do that on the right border, you go page up, page down. And you can decrease brightness like this and increase it like that. So yeah, that's the basics. Now uh, let's go to this other workspace. By the way, you can switch workspaces also like uh, that, like that, yeah. Right, that's how we can cycle through those. Um, yeah, I'm almost as bad as this as I am with selfish gestures, so sorry for that. Now, let's add a network because, of course, we want to be connected to the network. And um, so let's just add a WPA network for Wi-Fi. And now I can cho choose of those networks here and then type my passphrase, which is ironically the URL of my blog, linmob.net, where I publish a weekly update on all things PinePhone. And now it's connecting and uh, we should soon see a different date here on that screen. Now, well, what else is there? There's qu quite a lot else actually, uh, and it's not really all that uh, easy to figure out. So you have to go to config, and there you've got toggles for brightness and so on. But very important is this one, modem toggle. Without it, your modem won't be active, so it won't work as a phone. And well, you may not run that. Also important on this screen while we're here is modem info, modem lock, maybe a uh, flash on off if you need that. Well, yeah, that's quite boring actually. Then a bar toggle. I haven't tried that actually. Oh, I can hide and show that bar up there. Can invert colors. Uh, no. Doesn't seem to work. I can change the time zone. So I can just scroll through or type something. Well, let me type it because it's taping, taking too long. So let's go to Europe Berlin because, well, that's where I am. And now I need to swipe up to get the keyboard. Enter. Swipe down. And uh, I think now it changed OK. And we can maybe kill that window. Yeah. By swiping down with two fingers. I really like the swipe gestures a lot more than these button things. Now, auto rotate off on is the toggle here. Now, auto rotate is on enabled. Well, uh, yeah, rotation didn't work uh, previously too. So, and by the way, the date just updated. So, apparently, network time has been synced. Now, here's the rotate button. Let's see if that works. Oh yeah, that one works, but honestly, I don't want to use it like that. But it would be handy, like if you were to connect an external keyboard and would try to work in landscape mode. Um, and then here, this one I think is pretty important is upgrade PKG. So that means uh, you're upgrading your distro and you would of course want to do that every now and then. And now it's querying the Alpine Linux and Post Market OS repos and it says upgrade complete reboot for all changes to take effect but now would we how would we reboot 
from the system. Also important, uh, you can't really hold that power button because that has all these functions. Um, so you have to go to power and then choose it here. And I will show you in the end how that goes. So uh, let's just see what else there is. Uh, so we have scripts. Now what is that? There's a script to record audio for voice memos. Um, Reddit. So let's just try that briefly. So we can go here to uh, PinePhone official. And now here is some more. Um, okay, apparently there's a trending touchscreen bug on Nbox. And now we can uh, choose which with the software we would like to open this um, for the fun of it. Let's just choose W3M, which is a terminal browser. <laughs> and now we've got Reddit here. And I think this is how I could swipe. Let me look at my manual. Mm -hmm. Not really. Um, but it works like that. Okay, so. Yeah, not all that useful viewing Reddit in W3M. It's apparently not optimized for that. How can that be? Now let's try one of the other scripts. I'm not looking into RSS here. Um, YouTube, well, I had issues with that too because MPV wouldn't really uh, start playing the video. I mean, I can try it here. So history, PinePhone. Did I hit the right? button there. Really it's advantageous to just uh, use these menus actually. Mm, uh, use the buttons I mean. So huh. what's that? Kind of video and now YouTube DL starts Does it display? Oh yeah, now it's displaying. So let's close the menu. And now we're watching a video. And now it would be handy to rotate the screen like this, but it doesn't work, so. Yeah, and I can't really get that menu to close permanently. And auto-rotation doesn't really enable, but yeah. Uh, so if you're using that YouTube menu, switch the orientation first. Well, maybe we could try to do it right now, just while this is playing and go to config, rotate. Yeah, that's much better. And of course we, I don't hear anything but the volume is up, so I don't know. Something is buggy here in the state of Denmark. Let's just kill that stuff. And toggle the menu. <laughs> okay, it's time for a double press. And then uh, go to config and rotate back to normal. Right, because that's how you usually hold your phone. And now let's have, that's scripts. Now there's one more thing that's really amazing here and that's weather. It only supports weather for US cities currently, apparently. But uh, isn't this nerdy? I think it's really awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's kill that. Now. Let's have a look at the apps. Oh, dang it, sorry. So we've got Firefox, uh, which is the Firefox browser. Um, I'm, I'm not going to launch that now because you know it. Um, it's with the mobile patches and so on. So it's fine. Um, so Fox.gps is one app I don't have on my uh, app list yet on apps.linmob.net. And this is just, I'm um, somewhere in the north of Denmark here. And uh, yeah, it doesn't do pinch to zoom or something. You have to hit those buttons, I think. It's a software that was invented for the OpenMoco Neo Freerunner or 
Maybe the Nokia 900, I'm not quite sure. It's fairly old. And yeah, so let's end that one and just check what else there is. By the way, uh, auto positioning doesn't uh, currently work in in uh, Foxtor GPS. GPSD is missing. I don't know why that is, uh, but you should know that. But I will show you a Maps alternative later. So then there's NetSurf, which is a small lightweight browser which has a UI and well, you can use it to, for example, browse Wikipedia and sort of render stuff correctly. It doesn't use very much memory, just like this whole distribution. Oh, wrong menu. Um, doesn't use a ton of memory. Let's just open htop here and you see we've got NetSurf open. We've got a terminal with htop open and we've got, well, this uh, surf browser, uh, which is trying to load Dr. Coastal uh, open. And that's just, uh, just about a little more than 200 max used. So this is really something that you might be able to use on um, hardware like the, the N900, which has 256 megabytes of RAM. Although I must say uh, that this year, Memo Lester also doesn't use barely any RAM. It uses even less, but then it's a 32 bit system. So I don't know whether that factors in there. Uh, and memo list is far easier to use for no mere normal mortals. So yeah. Um, what else is there to demo? Um, I think what's interesting here, aside surf, W3M, we saw those, Xcalc is a calculator, VI is VI, ST is, and I don't know what this is, it's some kind maybe of a browser, gopher, I don't know what that is actually, I really have no idea. And I uh, didn't Google it, or look it up on the internet in some other way, so sorry for that. I tried to, but I didn't find anything that sounded like this is it. Now, the dialer is really simple. You just type your number and uh, you can add contacts and so on. And then, um, yeah. Uh, so let's just briefly try calling this number here, whether it rings while it's on. Let's see how that goes. Apparently, there's a hang now. Um, no, it's not a hang. It works, okay. But it doesn't ring, even though I turned on the modem, so uh, more bugs. But then this is the nightly. And I tried uh, the older image, which was a re proper release, but that one didn't have all the gestures and I didn't want to demo it without the gestures. So uh, I don't know what's going on here now. Uh, Apparently I may have locked the screen, I think. Um, so I'm just going to demo one more thing here. And that is uh, using ST to, well, launch another app the dumb way, uh, which uh, can do GPS. And that is GNOME Maps. Because I installed that. So it should launch normally. Yeah, here we go. And that one, if you hit it up there, uh, will locate you pretty easily and soon. So if you need a working map step on this, well, of course it doesn't work right now, but I trust me, it worked earlier. Um, yeah, that's the way to do it, I think. If Foxtrot GPS doesn't work for you. And now let's try to uh, just quit this because I apparently locked the screen or ruined the touch screen in some way. And you do so by power, and then you go to power off, and then you toggle the keyboard, you type MO, and it's going to shut down. So thanks for watching. Uh, 
this is certainly interesting. It's quite nerdy. Um, it's not going to become my favorite, I think. Uh, and I don't know why there was so much not working for me. Maybe I should have tried even longer and tried to figure it out. But uh, yeah, you only have so much time in life. Uh, if you guys feel smarter than me, go ahead. Otherwise, uh, I will certainly look at this one uh, soon. <laughs> It now has fun graphical glitches here, but it's really nice. Uh, so stay tuned for Memo Lester and have a great week. And really thank you for watching. It's appreciated. Bye bye.